Hey, this is David with Haggerty in our Redline Rebuild Series. Today I'm working on assembling our CT70 engine and uh, I've gotten my uh, two halves here back, the engine halves. I got them back from um, Jim's workshop down in Centerville, Ohio. I sent them down there. He actually reached out to us and said, hey, I have a vapor hone at my shop. And if you want to send those down, I'd be more than happy to go through and clean them up and clean them up. He did. This is, things are gorgeous. And uh, I mean, there you have little minor pitting that's, that's going to be there. I can go through and polish it if I really want to. But that's just from, you know, years of sitting with, uh, with water on it or what have you. But it's gorgeous on the inside, on the outside. I mean, this is just, I can't say enough how beautiful it looks and clean things are. Jim did an awesome job of attention to detail. And he said he had about a yeah, half hour roughly into two, the two halves. So uh, pretty, pretty quick. And if, you're, if you remember um, how this looked tore down, is it looks a lot like this hub assembly. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, why didn't you send the hub assembly down there too? Because it really needs it. Well, here's the kicker. We're just waiting for our vapor hone to show up. Now, as normal, I like to see the product before I buy it, my own thing. So, uh, so yeah, so we have a vapor hone coming. We're gonna have one here, and uh, we'll be able to make these look as nice as this. So we have those, and again, Jim does a great job. Uh, we'll put a link into his uh, uh, website. Uh, he's got like a blog type of deal going on and he d does some really interesting stuff and kind of spread out all around the gamut, not just automotive, not just bikes, just a bunch of different stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, I would recommend checking that out. Of course, make sure you come back because we're going to get this engine together. We're doing our time lapse rig here at the same time. And uh, Trail Buddy helped us out getting all the uh, pieces, parts, um, together as far as like new hardware, new seals, uh, some new bearings, and, uh, and, and did some stuff. And I have our, come in real close because this thing's huge. So here's our fresh camshaft, reground by Delta camshafts. Ken did a beautiful job once again. And uh, it's got just a slightly different profile in the, in the works here. And at some point, I will get his specs if he's willing to share those and post them if anybody's interested. But uh, we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. At this point, I'm ready to start putting in some fresh bearings. And uh, this is for the, the kicker shaft, basically. So that's where I'm going get, to get rolling. All right, so I'm going to place this puck underneath here just to have something to beat against other than the outside case. I didn't try it on the shaft, but we'll make an assumption that's right. And again, an arbor here would work a little nicer, but. feels good. All right, so now you can see I have all my parts laid out. Now, I won't lie to you and tell you that I did this from memory because I did not. So I brought in, uh, I have two different manuals here. I have the, the climber manual, and then I have this other one that I printed offline. And um, it, uh, they're both very useful. Now keep in mind, even though they built this bike from 69 out to 82, there are all kinds of little idiosyncrasies relative to model years and so on and so forth. So as you look at your manual, be very careful and make sure you're looking at the type one, type two, and then whatever else is after that. So in our standpoint, we think we're confident that we have in 74, we have a type two and that's what we're going with. Some of the, of course, illustrations line up and some of them don't. So at that point, you just got to figure it out. 
Um, I do have my bearings pressed in. Now, I used a little bit of a combination of the press and I used a hammer to tap them in. Um, I could have also taking, taken the one half and put it in the oven and warmed it up, but our toaster oven that we have here is not quite large enough with the studs on the end here, so I could have put this section in, but it wouldn't have gotten things warm enough, so that's why I did not use that. It's probably the best way to do it is heat that all up, but again, you also, you know, maybe there's a concern as far as these other bushings and stuff that I don't need to replace. I'll say loosening. I doubt it because you're not going to get it that hot, just enough to swell this aluminum up and then drop that in there. Again, I just took my time and tapped things in. Um, and actually this one slipped pretty close as it was. So no big deal. At this point, I am ready to, ins to put the case halves together. Um, I need to put the, the, all the transmission piece. That's what this is here. I need to put the transmission in and the crankshaft in with the rod and then, and then the kicker. Um, piece and I think that's kind of where I'm at. Um, hopefully I have all the shims and whatnot ready to roll. We'll drop everything together, but we're going to roll the time lapse and catch, capture all this. Come on, you know better than that. I got this figured out already. Got it. We got it, right? It's a little wonky. Oh, let's put it that way. Can do this. I can do. See, I can put this case half together slowly. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay, I couldn't do that part slower. Guess that could go in the later. We'll just hide that. So, 
case half is together. Um, and the last thing here I want to do is put it up on this engine stand, which is pretty handy. But of course you can't put the halves together. But then this will also locate when we go to put the, put everything together as far as the engine into the bike. This will hold it right in position and we can slide the bike up to the motor and go right on in. Come on. We are now on to our humongous high volume oil pump. And then we'll do get after our clutch pack as well, but let's get our oil pump together first. It's pretty simple with uh, you know shaft, inner ring, and then your outer ring, and then your uh, rotor here, and a cover, and a couple seals, and three screws. But it is mammoth. Okay, while I uh, go through and clean up all the parts for this clutch, I started soaking our, the clutch frictions. Um, they need to soak up basically oil because they are a wet clutch and you don't want to put them in there dry because they need that oil as part of their uh, functionality. Um, if you put them in dry, they'll just basically go away pretty quick. So we're going to do that and I'm actually going to grab some lunch and then we'll come back and then before we put that in there. So we have plenty of time for them to soak and, um, and, and like I said, absorb that oil and, and be ready for a good long bit of riding. Okay, well, you can see we're back from lunch now and everything's cleaned up, ready to be assembled. I do have my old parts here up here still, but I, I got my clutch discs in here and they're soaking. Um, so those are gonna be good. And uh, I have a nice little exploded view to work with, just in case I forgot something over that period of time, it's, it's always possible. So uh, at this point, time to put her back together. All right, you can see that we have this center section of the engine and transmission uh, up on our trail buddy stand. Man, it makes for a nice spot. Now that I don't have to be flipping, flopping everything here, I can just assemble things on a vertical. So at that point, I need to get in my, uh, my gear selector, and then I have my spring for my kicker, put the oil pump in, and get the clutch mechanism done. And at that point, that's gonna be a wrap for today. Putting a little Loctite on the gear selector bolt so we don't have any problems with that coming out. 
uh, I could see from the initial assembly that there was one on there. And a little birdie told me that I should make sure I do that. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably a good idea at this point to uh, make sure I have the guts of this thing assembled right and uh, give it a quick little test to make sure I'm actually shifting, shifting gears here. It seems to be all right. Cool, whoops. <clears throat> Well, here we go. Here's our short block. It happens to have a transmission attached to it, but it's a short block nonetheless. And next time around you see this assembly, we'll have our, the jug and the head, and then of course the side covers and everything will be all nice and ready to go on. And then we'll wrap up this engine assembly. Until then, get out in the shop, get your work done. Over here, it's a pretty nice day. We'll see ya.